and welcome to this month's tutorial that is the Lululu Square. This is the one we are working up and it's a brand new one to the What Were You Thinking game family. So it will go with any of the other squares if you want to do a pillow or a blanket or something like that. You can just join them together. And this month it's especially fun because I teamed up with Ilse from My Crush. She's a super funny, super sweet, ridiculously talented maker. And we had such a blast <laughs> designing this 20 by 20 centimeter square. I started off with the first round, she did the second, I did the third, she did the fourth and so on. All the way out to lucky round number 20 that ended it all. So lots and lots of sip and stitch and laughs and fun has gone into this one. And I'm really happy and thankful for having Ilse playing this game with me. And what's even more exciting this month is that Ilse agreed to film her rounds. So I will be showing mine and she will be showing hers. And this is actually her debut at Video Tutorials. So I'm really, really excited that you took that leap and helped me out filming this tutorial, Ilse. Thank you so much for being so brave. You have done a marvelous job. So can't wait to share with everyone. Before we dive in though, before we dive into this gorgeous, gorgeous make, I just want to say that as with all of our patterns and tutorials, we at Sisters in Stitch use US terminology throughout. So US terminology, lots of fun, grab yourself a coffee or tea and let's begin. So to make this square exactly as I have done in the tutorial, you will need six colors of yarn, light yellow, light pink, white, icy blue, light gray and an old pink. And it will look like this. So this is color A, B, C, D, E and F. And of course you can use whatever colors you want, whatever kind of yarn you want, whatever you find fancies and works with the projects you have in mind. This is the original square that I did and I know that Ilse has chosen to use beautiful colors too. So I will list everything in here below, the link to our homepage and there you can find all the colorways, okay? So grab your things, a cup of tea or coffee and let's get going. Round number one. So to begin we start with our color A and make a magic circle or maybe a chain start if you prefer that. And then it's really simple. All we are going to do is work two single crochets into the magic circle like that and then chain three. One, two, three. And we are doing this for three more times. So one, two single crochets, chain three. one, two single crochets, chain three, and again, one, two single crochets, and chain three. And now you should have like four corner spaces, so just pull your tail, whoops, back and down to the center, and then close, okay? And then just fasten off with a slip stitch to the second stitch and you will have what looks like a little cute square with corners, okay? And a little beginning, this is what it should look like once you have um, fastened off and weaved in your ends at the back. It's so cute, it's so tiny. Let's see what Ilse is doing for our next round. Yeah, exciting! Hello, Ilse here. Um, before we start, I just want to say thank you to Tess for encouraging me to do this. This is my first video tutorial, so please bear with me. Um, for round two, we'll be using color B and we'll be making DC2 togethers in every chain three space. Starting with a standing stitch in the first chain space. And a normal DC. And chaining them together. We'll be doing this three times in every chain space. So second time. And a third time.
and then we do a chain one I grab some yarn and then on to the next chain space and we're doing exactly the same thing three easy two together That one and a chain one again and on to the next sorry if I'm a bit quiet I'm just really focusing right now <laughs> maybe it'll get better at the end of the square needles Third. and then a chain one and to the last chain space And then a final chain one and that's round two just join with an invisible join in the second stitch and you're done hope you enjoyed it and it's on to this hi so i'm back well i didn't really leave but <laughs> you'll see take over and oh my doesn't it look sunny and shiny and absolutely gorgeous over there um, here it's quite gloomy and rainy <laughs> and windy but I don't mind it's perfect for doing tutorials so we are beginning in any chain one space placed between the sets of three two double crochets together okay so in this chain space I'm go ahead and do a standing stitch and make two single crochets pretty straightforward here yes and then we are going to highlight these stitches by placing a front post single crochet around the next stitch and then a single crochet in the chain one space between them so we're doing that three times in total so front post single crochet single crochet in between and the front post single crochet like that so that is the repeat I'm doing it once more with you here. So two single crochets in the chain space placed between the sets. There we go. Front post single crochet around the first. Double crochet two together. Single crochet in between. Front post single crochet around. Single crochet between. And then a front post single crochet around there we go so it will look like these these will pop even more the little petals and you just go around all the way and then close with an invisible join to the second stitch so do that and let's head over to Ilse for round number four for round four we'll be using color D and we'll be making these stitches all the way around so starting with a standing stitch anywhere you like and making your first V stitch like this then we're skipping one stitch and we're going to the next and make another V stitch Skipping one and on to the next for another V stitch. Really simple. So I don't think I should explain more. Just go all the way around 
and ending with an invisible joy. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. On to test now. So for round number five, uh, we are creating these before the large petals, petals kind of thing. And it's gonna be really, really cute. So I was thinking for this round, I'm going to do this one once more and then maybe adding a darker pink out here. That is my plan. So let's get going. So this round is really straightforward. Uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to place a lot of double crochets in every other chain two space of the v-stitches. So we are skipping the legs all together and are just working in every other chain two space. Okay, so begin in any one you like. I'm doing the color B again, just so you know. So beginning in any, whoops. Luckily I do that a lot, so I know how to save it. Ta-da! And then we are making three more, so we have four. One, two, three, and four. Chain one, and then four more around the chain two space. The same one that you already worked in. Like that. One, two, three, and four. And now we are skipping this leg, we are skipping this V-stitch and that leg. So around this chain two space, you can almost feel where you're supposed to go because they are falling quite nicely together, okay? So just work four more double crochets around it. Chaining one and then four more. and four and this is all we do so skip the next leg the next v-stitch and the next leg and go in the next chain two space I'm at my very last double crochet and of course I caught the tail <laughs> there we go <laughs> um, so all you have to do is skip at the very last point you are not working here at all so you close with an invisible join to the second stitch or if you want to slip stitch here and hide the ends behind, that's fine too. But so this is how it should look. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of eight double crochets with a chain one in between the fourth and the fifth, okay? So over to you, Ilse. Carry on. Oh, don't you just love this little flower this has created? I really do so cute for round six the pattern says to use color f but i'm only using five colors so i'm going back to color b for my square so feel free to use whatever colors you like it's all up to you this round we'll be crocheting over round five and into the skip three stitches of round four and we'll begin with a standing half double crochet So, and two more in the same v-stitch and two then we'll be chaining four one two three four and three half double crochets in the next skipped v-stitch making sure the chain is on the back of the petals so you can't see it it's one two three and then again a chain four one two three four and three half double crochets two, and three repeating this all the way around and then closing like every round with a invisible join so this is what it looks like at the end of part six now i'm wondering what this will do with it next so this is what it looks like at the end of part six now i'm wondering what this will do with it next okay 
so you can laugh now <laughs> I switched the colors for one million time and um, I'm going for the icy blue going away from the pink and into the blue blue shades it might be the fact that it's raining but I do love a good blue so for round number six seven sorry for round number seven we are beginning in any second half double crochet of the three that we made the last time okay so we are making a standing double crochet to begin with or chain two slip stitch chain two or three to the height of an easy and then you're placing three more in here you might recognize this set from a previous round so we have now four double crochets then we are chaining one and then work four more double crochets into that second half double crochet from round number six so three and four like that look how pretty that is oh love it okay so what you will do now is that you will skip the next half double crochet and then you can pull this slightly up you're gonna place a slip stitch around the chain one and the chain four from round six and five like that and then you just repeat so skipping the next stitch and placing four double crochets chain one four double crochets into the second of the three half double crochets skipping the next half double crochet and then slip stitching around the chain one and chain four space from round six and four five <laughs> six and five <laughs> i'm counting four <laughs> that's why I, I totally missed that but this is all you do so you just enter through grab your yarn pull it through and slip stitch and just you can be a little bit soft on your first double crochet you don't want it to pull too much um, but it sorts itself out on the other rounds too but if it, you feel like it's pulling too much you can always change it to a treble but wait until you have come a little bit because I think it will sort itself out as you go around okay so just put it like this and it should be fine if it looks like this you don't have to change anything if your work is super tight do a treble at the ends instead okay so this is all we do do that for seven more times no sorry four one two three four and then close with a slip stitch to the second stitch okay have fun For round eight, I'm using color D again. And in this round, we'll be working in the chain one spaces we made before and in the chain four spaces at the back of the flower we made in round six. Starting in the chain one space with a standing single crochet. Like this. And then we'll be making eight double crochets in the chain four space and we'll be making them four just before the slip stitch and four behind the slip stitch so one two three and four in front of the slip stitch One, two, three, and four after the slip stitch. Then it's a single crochet in the chain one again, and again working in the chain four space. So one. Two, three, and four, and four behind the slip stitch. 
two, three, and four. So it's really easy going all the way around and closing with an invisible join in the end. I'll show you when it's done. So this is what look, what round eight looks like when it's finished. In this round, we have been working in the back, in the chain four spaces. And as you can see, I already put away the ends. I do that after every round. So they really, they don't get in the way and I don't have a lot of ends to put away in the end of the project. So that's it for round eight, a little flower in a circle. Maybe next round, this will square it out. I really don't know what she's thinking. So let's find out. We are getting close to two digits. We are up to round number nine. And I really, really love this mandala shape. It, it's so cute. And I couldn't just square it out. So in fact, <laughs> what we will do next is a lot of V stitches again. So you are going to find yourself a little single crochet from the previous round. And in that, make a standing double crochet. That will be the first leg of your V stitch and then chaining two and then a double crochet back into that same just like previously on this round just this time we are not skipping one we are skipping two so one two and then in the third stitch work a v-stitch like that and i'm using this old pink that i think is adorable one two it's going to bring a little bit of a visual excitement to it. The other colors have been quite calm and soothing. And I think this will pop some life into it. Or it will be too much. You never know. So <laughs> you don't know until you try. <laughs> so just go ahead and make a V-stitch. And then skip the next two. Make a V-stitch. Skip the next two. Make a V-stitch. Skip the next two all the way around okay so this is quite a soothing round and let's see what our day Ilse will do for the next one okay see you soon bye oh and you should totally have 21 <laughs> these stitches once you are all the way around okay so just double check. You can always look at the pattern. Remember that we have the written pattern published on our homepage, sistersinstitch.com. So if you want to just have it once you're going along, go and download it now, okay? So now, see you in a bit. So let's just start crocheting and everything will be clear. As I said, I will be starting in the V-stitch that's right in line with this petal and the middle cluster. And I'll be starting with a half double crochet. And then two more half double crochets in that V-stitch. And one in between. So skipping the double crochet and skipping it here again and making three half double crochets in the v-stitch and one in between the v-stitches now we need to have 21 stitches per side as i said before but because we're not starting in a corner we're starting in the middle of one side we'll be making 12 before we make the chain two and when we made the last chain two will be doing nine more so now i just have to do four three in the v and one in between the v's that should make 12. one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. right and then chain two and then we're going to start the first 21 half double crochets. So three half double crochets in every, around every chain two space and one in between until we have 21 stitches. See, it's not that hard. What was hard was 
thinking this round up because it wasn't easy making a square out of this because we're having seven petals which is not we can't divide it with uh, with four so it wasn't easy to square this out but i think this is the best way i could do it hope you like it three in here I'm gonna have to do counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. See, this is the first stitch in this V. So we'll be doing chain two first and then making the last two. Half double crochets. That will be the first of the next 21. I'll do these two rounds and then I'll come back to you for the last bit. So I just made the last chain two. I only have to do nine more half double crochets and this round is finished. As I made three half double crochets in this v-stitch we're starting in between the v's with one half double crochet and then three in the v which makes four half double crochets fifth one in between five and six seven eight and the last one in between the v's and that's it just closing with an invisible join and round 10 is finished it was not that hard wasn't it hi so i'm back and i'm desperately trying to use up the very last light of today so for this round which is round 11 um, on the original square i actually chose to go with the same color as the previous round which is this light pink in this case however today i'm feeling adventurous so i'm going with the gray that we had here again so color d if i don't forget it no it's correct <laughs> just had to double check so find yourself a chain two corner space preferably one that you haven't sewn in the ends on and then just work two half double crochets to start with one two chain two and then two more so two half double crochets chain two two half double crochets into that first chain two space okay and then we are gonna use front posts all the way here in different heights to straighten out the line so in the next three stitches around them actually we are doing front post double crochets so one front post double crochet two front post double crochets and three like that and then we are doing four front post half double crochets so we are descending in height here one two, three, and four front post half double crochets. And there we go. Now we are doing seven front post single crochets, okay? So just keep that line going. One, two, Three, four, five, six, and seven. Like that. So now we are mirroring our way back. So over the next four stitches, 
we are working a front post half double crochet. So one front post half double crochet, two, three, and four. And then we are doing a front post double crochet over the last three stitches. Really straightforward. Two and three. And that's it. That's all you are gonna do. So to sum it all up, here goes my papers. <laughs> we are doing two half double crochets, chain two, two half double crochets into the corner chain two space. Then we are working three front post double crochets, followed by four front post half double crochets, seven front post single crochets, four front post half double crochets, and three front post double crochets. Just do that all the way around all four sides and knit us up for round number 12. Before we start the next round, I would like to tell you a little story. Way back when, when we were still designing this square, I remember I was sitting at the kitchen table and looking at it as it is right now, thinking about what I will do next. And at that point, my son walks in and he comes standing beside me and he looks at the square, telling me he really likes it. and. When I tell him that it's my turn to do the next round, he looks at me with a really straight face and he tells me, don't ruin it, mom. So that put on a little extra pressure because I was thinking I was going to use color A again. And in here I'm using gold for that. But in the square, the original square, I used mustard. So let me grab that. And as you can see, I think the mustard is a stronger color as the gold is. And I thought our, squ our square, as it was, as it's looking right here, it was a really soft and, and serene kind of feel about it. And I didn't want to ruin it with a harsh border. So I decided to do it in highlights. And in between, I was using color B. So if you're ready, I'll show you how to do it. So for this round, we'll be changing colors and I'll be using my color A and my color B, but you can use whatever colors you like. We'll start in the chain two corner space and we'll be making two double crochets together. So I'm starting with my color A with a standing stitch. One two double crochets together and chain one, two double crochets in the same space, another chain one and then the last two double crochets. This time we won't be finishing uh, the stitch, we'll be leaving three loops on our hook and then we'll be taking our other color, if I can find the beginning, it's here. So we'll be pulling it through three loops on our hook. Now, at this point, we'll be crocheting over our color A yarn, so we can use it again once we get here. We're going to start in the second stitch, so we're skipping the hidden one, and we're going directly here for a half double crochet. And we're doing a half double crochet in 10 stitches. So this is one, two, three, four, five. I'm also crocheting over the yarn end of color B. Six, seven. nine and then the final one we won't be finishing it because we'll be changing back to color a 
I'm gonna just put this end aside. So starting your stitch and then changing to color A and pulling it through like that. Now we'll be skipping one stitch and then doing the same as we did here. So three times two double crochets together. Skipping one stitch in here, two double crochet together. Oh, I forgot to crochet over my color B. Skipping one in here, double crochet, two double crochet together, chain one, another two double crochet together. And the chain one and then the final two double crochet together not finishing your stitch as we did before but uh, changing to color B again skipping the next stitch and then ten half double crochets in color B funny story about this round is when I finished it and I sent my notes to Tess I totally forgot to mention that you could uh, just crochet over the yarn we are switching so she ended up cutting her yarn every time we change color and she had a lot of ends to put away in at the end of her round so she kind of cursed at me back, back then but I think she can laugh at it right now. And this, if you don't like me telling this story, just cut it out. You'll be editing this video, so you can choose if you leave it in or not. But I kind of think it's a funny story, so... <laughs> I'm sorry again. And this is our final 10 stitch, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep. Yeah number 10 switching back to color a now we're skipping the final stitch and we're going into the corner and repeating this round so two double crochet together chain one another two double crochet together crocheting over your color b chain one and the final Two double crochet together and changing back to color B like this then again skipping the hidden stitch and then half double crochets just like we did before so I think you can manage without me right now so I'm leaving you to this and I'll be back when it's finished so as you can see we're at the end of round 12 and I've changed in the last stitch I've changed the color A again just to make a neat invisible join. So that's it. I hope you don't hate me too much for all the color changes but I think it's kind of cute. And now it's back to Tess and who knows maybe she's gonna take revenge on me. <laughs> for all the loose ends I put her through. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Oh my, did that round number 12 bring back some color um, <laughs> nightmares, <laughs> color changing nightmares. She actually managed to find my Achilles heel, which is hilarious because I do crochet a lot, but switching colors has never been my cup of tea. So I haven't learned that properly. I think I've only tried it like once or twice before and so I didn't think I just did as I usually do with I treated it like an independent round and I cut my yarn at each and um, hide the ends and oh my it was just an utter mess I cut the yarns too short I did I don't know what I was doing I was too tired probably <laughs> we do love crocheting late me and Ilse um, but for this time I actually did as she showed you for round number 12 and oh my the world of difference this round was actually quite relaxing this time 
especially in comparison to what I did. This will not win any awards, I can tell you that. Look at these messy ends, oh my. Yeah, I gave up. I just tied the knots together and like, I need to continue. I think I actually pushed this next round, designing it for like two weeks after, just because I had to finish off all the ends. It took forever. It definitely did. So, but don't worry, I'll say I, I definitely did, didn't want to punish you for it. It was actually a learning curve, um, which was great because now I know how to do it, especially since you taught me here on the last round. So thank you for that. <laughs> so this round, um, I decided to actually hide my ugly ends. Uh, <laughs> so this is a little bit of a hide and seek. No, mostly hide. So what we will do is I have used my color D, C, sorry, color C, that is the white here. I thought it was a good time to use it again. So we are going to do a front post double crochet over the next 10 stitches, starting in this first one after a corner cluster. So make sure that you're not, oops, um, make sure that you're not grasping the, the color A thread only the stitch okay leave it down at the bottom so do that over the next 10 stitches so front post double crochet three four nope front post double crochet number four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost. <laughs> there we go. And ten. So up till here, no problem. We have ten front post double crochets. So over the next one, which is the cluster. We are doing a front post half double crochet, okay? So just go around it. And then we are chaining one. And then over the next one, we are doing a front post single crochet, minding the height here. Then chaining one again and doing a front post half double crochet. Like that. There we go. So that is the easy. Part. We are now doing 10 more over here. So just follow along. 10 more front post double crochet that is. So just quite a nice and relaxing round I must say. <laughs> After the last one I just wanted to rest. <laughs> and let me tell you if you do it the way Ilse did, so much easier. So 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 much easier. Don't cut the thread and um, that was a bad decision <laughs> if you ever want to finish. So there we go and the last one. Now we are coming up to a corner. It was a little while since I did this one so I just needed to double check. But you do a front post half double crochet around the cluster, chaining one, front post single crochet over the cluster chaining one we're as you can tell skipping the chain ones okay and a front post half double crochet over the next cluster like that so this is a really easy one we are doing 10 front post double crochets which are all the blue ones here then we are doing a front post half double crochet over the double crochet two together we're chaining one skipping the chain one space Working a front post single crochet around the next, chaining one, skipping the chain one, and then working a front post half double crochet over the next one. And then we are repeating, so front post double crochet 10 times, and then front post half double crochet, chain one, front post single crochet, chain one, front post half double crochet. So do that all the way around and meet Ilse up for round number 14. 
Hi, welcome back. Well, you probably hadn't been gone, but I took a break yesterday from filming. And I spent some time with my family, so for me it feels like coming back now. Anyway, where were we? Round 14 already. In this round we'll be doing some back post stitches and puff stitches. Um, it's really straightforward again. So we'll be starting in the first front post double crochet after a corner. So that's this one. And we'll be doing a back post double crochet. So starting with the standing one. Like this. And we'll be making 10 back, back post double crochet. So that's all the way to the end. Till here. So you actually don't have to count them. I hope you're enjoying making this square because I can tell you it was a lot of fun making it. We had so many laughs and so many talks. Sometimes way past be our bedtime. My husband would say, don't stay up too late. But when he knew I was talking to Tess, he knew I wasn't coming to bed soon. So that yeah, was a lot of fun. And we're on the last back post. So that's 10 back post double crochets. We'll be skipping this one and we'll be going directly in between the two uh, double crochets together, yes. Uh, we'll be crocheting over the chain one from round 13 and the one from round 12. And in here we'll be making a mini puff. Uh, that's something I, I don't know if it exists, but something I came up with because I didn't want the puff stitch to stick out too much so that it was staying relatively relatively flat. Um, so we're not doing the yarn over to start with. We're going directly in between our stitches and pulling up our yarn. Then yarn over, going in again, pulling up a yarn, yarn over, going in again, and pulling up yarn. Yarn over, going through all the loops, and a closing chain one. I'm gonna grab some more yarn. And we'll be doing the same in the same stitch. So no, not yarn over, force of habit. So three going through all loops and a closing chain one. Now into the next space. So skipping this stitch and going in here, doing the same as we did before. And going through all the stitches, chain one, and a chain one, like this. So I think it kind of sticking more to one line than. A normal puff stitch will do. Then we'll be skipping this stitch and we're doing 10 back posts again to the corner. I decided to do some uh, puff stitches because in my previous rounds I caused a lot of trouble for this with the color change and all the ends she ended up with so I thought why not do some puff stitches. I know she likes them a lot so I wanted to treat her with this. She's so sweet. But we really had a good laugh at all the ends that she had to put away. So that's number 10. 
and now we'll be skipping this one and doing two normal puffs in between the two double crochets together so yarn over putting up yarn yarn over pulling up yarn over and pulling up closing it with the chain and another one in between the same stitches Did I do too much? Yes, I did too much. I wasn't concentrating. So yarn over, yarn over, and another yarn over. Pulling through, and a chain one to close, and then chain two for our corner. And then we'll be doing the same here. One puff. And the second puff stitch. And chain one to close. So that's how this round looks like. I'll meet you up at the end. So that's round 14 finished. Uh, I finished, I closed it with an uh, invisible join here in the second stitch. I put away all my ends, so I guess I'm ready for the next round. Let's see what this comes up with. See you later. Oh. For round 15, I'm using color F again, which I used over here. I wanted a quite powerful color because we're only showcasing the corners, as I said. So we are going to work in round 14 but also in the fifth stitch on the back here, that was my blue for round number 12. So the fifth one is here. If you want to, you can go ahead and put a stitch mark in each fifth double crochet from that round. But I don't think you need it. I think it's quite easy to find um, despite having a stitch mark in it, okay? So whatever makes your life easier, do so. <laughs> and then we're going to start in corner chain two space with three double crochets chain one three double crochets so just start off with that and you can of course switch out my first standing double crochet for the slip stitch chain two or three to the height of your double crochets but i do love a standing stitch so it was game changer for me here we go one two three chain one one two three and now we are doing a front post half double crochet around the first puff here after the corner. And then we're doing a half double crochet in the, around the chain one space that closed the puff. And then a front post half double crochet around the next puff. And then I'm going to sneak a peek. We are doing a single crochet in the next stitch, which was the first front back post double crochet, back post double crochet it was. And now we're chaining four. And then we're doing a little bit of a yarn dive here. So we're flipping our work a little bit and just looking at these blue double crochets from round number 12. And in the fifth of this one, these ones, we are doing a single crochet. So just count the heads. One, two, three, four, five. Putting your hook in there and placing a single crochet. Chaining four again, one, two, three, four. And then we're skipping all of these stitches and going into the last back post double crochet before a puff and putting a single crochet in that. And then we're chaining four again. And then we're skipping all the puff stitches and placing a single crochet in the first back post double crochet after them. Like that. And if you think that this pulls too tightly, just add a chain, okay? It all depends on your tension and what kind of yarn you're using. But it should lay on the back and not on the front. So after placing that single crochet, we are chaining four again. One, two, three, four. Flipping our work and counting to five. So one head, 
two, three, four, five. The center one. The most center one. <laughs> one, two, three, four chains. And then we are back up here. So into the last back post double crochet here. Work a single crochet. And then we're doing a front post half double crochet around the puff. A half double crochet around the chain one space. And then grabbing some more yarn and doing a last front post half double crochet. So this is what it will look like. It will not look like much. <laughs> uh, it will look like we have missed a lot here. And we have because it's all to the back. So what you will do is again working three double crochets in the corner, chaining one, three double crochets all around the chain two space. Then working a front post half double crochet around the puff, a half double crochet in the space between them, a front post half double crochet around the next puff and a single crochet in the first back post double crochet. Then we're chaining four, making a single crochet in the fifth skipped not skipped, sorry, the fifth <laughs> double crochet from the other one. <laughs> okay, so this is how easy it is. <laughs> okay, so what you will do is work three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets around the chain two space, one front post half double crochet around the puff, one half double crochet around the chain one space between them, one front post half double crochet around the next puff, one single crochet in the next stitch. Chaining four and going to the back, into the fifth double crochet from round 12, make a single crochet. Chain four, go back up and put a single crochet into the last back post double crochet. Chain four, skip all the puffs and chain spaces, and make a single crochet in the first back post double crochet. Chain four again, go down into the fifth double crochet from round 12, make a single crochet, chain four, go back up and put a single crochet into the last back post double crochet. Front post half double crochet, half double crochet around the space and a front post half double crochet. Ta-da! So go around and do that and yeah, meet me up to finish this round, okay? See you soon! So that was round number 15 and I have fastened my ends and I think it looks adorable. I just love these subtle little leaf-shaped things. If you know me, you know I'm all about flowers and petals and stuff, so I draw from that. and. The reason I made this round was the reason why this game is so much fun. It kind of makes you want to surprise the other one and forces you to bring out the big guns and not playing it safe all the time. So this was definitely an attempt to throw her a little bit off her feet. <laughs> and me too, because I was thinking, what would I do with this one? And it could be really fun to see what it also will go. So. Let's see what she did. Round number 16 is coming up now. In round 16, we'll be crocheting in both round 15 and round 14. And we'll be starting in any corner space. So if you're ready, here we go. So in corner space we will be making a single crochet, a chain one and a single crochet. Now in the next six stitches we'll be doing a back post single crochet, so in this round we'll be hopping around from round 15 to round 14 and back again. And the last one, we'll be skipping the single crochet here and we'll be going to round 40 and doing a 
front post half double crochet in the first three stitches. Then it's back to round 15 and that's in the back of your work and we'll be crocheting in the chain 4 spaces and in the single crochet. So in the first chain 4 space we'll do a half double crochet then a half double crochet in the single crochet and three half double crochets in the next chain 4 space. like so then it's back to round 14 and we'll be doing front post half double crochets in the last two stitches so we're skipping five and then one half double crochet in the last two stitches like this Now we're at the puffs and we'll be doing a front post single crochet around the next two puffs. So that's one and two. Then a single crochet in between the third and the fourth mini puff and a front post single crochet around the next two mini puffs. And now it's back to the other side, skipping this single crochet and doing two front post half double crochets in the first two stitches of round 14. Then half double crochets in the chain four space. This time we'll be making two. Um, we're not completely copying this uh, bit because we're doing the same stitch count, but we're placing the stitches a bit different, so it looks better. You just have to trust me on this one. Uh, I just did a half double crochet in the uh, single crochet and then two half double crochets in the next chain four space. And now back to round 14, skipping the five stitches and doing a front post half double crochet around the last three. That's the same again as the other side. Skipping the single crochet here and doing back post single crochets around the next two, uh, the next six stitches. I'm sorry. Four. six so that's it for round 16 do that on other three sides and then i'll meet you up in the end oh that was such a fun round thank you ilse i love back post and front post action it's just so much fun i love also emphasizing emphasizing and the puff stitches and the cluster stitches by doing back post and front post so i think it just it just makes life a little bit beautif more beautiful. <laughs> so for now, uh, for this round, we are doing it a little bit less adventurous. Um, <laughs> we are working a lot of double crochets and a few of them, six to be precise, in the back loops and fur loops only. But I'll show you how to do it. So grab your yarn and hook and let's get going. So find yourself a corner chain one space and make a double crochet, chain two, double crochet. So just a simple classic corner. There we go. And now we are making one double crochet in the corner single crochet and the six back post single crochets from the previous round. So over the next seven stitches work a double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and 
seven. There we go. So over the next three stitches, we are working a double crochet in the back loop only, catching the third loop. And if you don't know what that is, let me find a little needle and I'll show you. So the stitches consists of a front loop and a back loop. So the front one is closest to you and the back loop are closest away from you, so to say. And if you turn your work, you'll see that there is a little loop here going right underneath the back loop. That is the third loop. And if you work your stitch only in this one, you see what happens, it stretches a little bit. So if you want an airier look, you only do it in this one. But if you want it to stick to the back, you do it in both loops and then you have like this a little bit more solid uh, place to put it and it will keep nice and tight towards your work, okay? So that is what we will do now. I'll show you, it's not, it's not hard at all. So back loops only, a double crochet going into there. There, <laughs> the Swedish, Swinglish happened there. Uh, again, <laughs> there, <laughs> there and there. It's a, yeah, language barrier, sorry. <laughs> but you're going in through the back loop and also the third loop, looking like that. So leaving the front loop, grabbing the two here. And then just make a normal double crochet. And the same for the next one. And I'll just show you what happens when you don't use the third back loop. The third loop. Ooh, there we go. Do you see? This is the difference if you use both loops to the back or just one. It just wobbles out there. These ones are staying put and that one is up in the air. So highly recommend trying to catch the third one too for this square. There we go. So, and all we have to do now is work a double crochet over the next 19 stitches, which is all the way over here, hint, hint. Uh, and then we're going to do the back loops over here too. So quite a calm round. I must say. So today the sun is shining. It's actually a quite nice day. Uh, it's just the last couple of days has been quite rainy here. So it's nice to have a little bit of a sunshine and yeah, enjoying a little bit of the summer too. Let's need some more yarn. So we are just going over to the other side. As I said, your stop point can be the next three front post half double crochets from the previous round. But double check that you have the right amount of stitches so you haven't missed one in the previous round. You want it to be symmetrical and straight. Sorry, now I wasn't looking to what I was doing. <laughs> So there we go. I'm not counting as of now, but I'll double check as soon as I, oh my, as soon as I get over there. There we go. So now you should have 19 stitches worked in the entire stitch starting over here, the first stitch after the three front post half double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Spot on. So we are just repeating what we did on the other side. So working in the back loops only, catching the third loop like that. Work a double crochet over the next three stitches. Two and And now we are back to working a double crochet over the next seven stitches, which is the back post single crochets and the corner single crochet. Easy peasy, super breezy. Here we go. There, three, four, 
five, six, and the last one, seven. And then you just repeat what we just did. So corners are one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet. Then you work a double crochet over the next seven stitches. Don't miss the hidden one. A double crochet in the back loop, catching the third loop over the next three, which are the back post half double, front post half double crochet, sorry. And then one double crochet in the next 19 stitches, which will bring you to the other side, working three double crochets in the back loops only, catching the third loop, and then a double crochet over the next seven stitches. So do that all the way around and meet also up for round 18. Okay, have fun. We have come all the way around and <laughs> for the next round I broke my own rules and tried to tell Ilse <laughs> what to do, <laughs> which are not how the game is played as she said. So let's see how she handled that, okay? I want to add the reason why I wanted to suggest what she could do was that I was really afraid of how big it was going to get because we have already done a square that is not a square anymore, but it ended up being too big because we just thought it was so much fun. So it's not an excuse for minding in <laughs> and breaking your own rules, but it's an explanation. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> I will leave it at that. But yeah, she did an awesome job on the next round without me interfering, of course, of course. I couldn't help myself, okay? This game is too much fun. And I really wanted a 20 by 20 centimeter square, um, which we would have gotten even if I wouldn't uh, interfere. So don't break the rules if you play the game. Don't break the rules. <laughs> In this round, round 18, we'll be doing mainly back post stitches. And I may have thrown in something to break that up but I'll tell about that later so if you're ready then we'll start in any corner space with a standing half double crochet so it's a half double crochet chaining two and a half double crochet again now we'll be doing one Back post half double crochet in the next 11 stitches. So the thing I was going to tell you is that um, when Tess did the round 17 and she sent it through, uh, my immediate thought was that I was going to do some back post in the next stitch, next round because we're nearly at the end of our square. So it would be nice to really make it like a square and then she suggested that i'll do some back post and i thought oh no that's not how we play this game you're not supposed to interfere with what i'm doing so i thought i'd draw in something extra and i'm gonna see if i'm in there yet one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, one too many. So the little something extra is that we'll be doing five double crochets in the third uh, stitch of the skipped ones here in round 14. So that's one, two, three, that's here. So just five double crochets. One. Two, three, four, and five. Now we're going back to our round here and we'll be skipping the next five stitches. So if you look at the back, we have one here and a back post. And then we're going to one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. I can't count anymore. One, two, three, four, that's five. So we'll be doing a back post, single crochet in here. 
and we'll be doing back bow single crochet in nine stitches so this is one two three four Seven, eight, and nine. And now we'll be doing again in the third stitch of the skipped ones here five double crochets. One, two, three. four and five skipping five stitches again one two three four five and back posts half double crochets in the next 11 stitches so that's all the way up to here so i'm really glad that this interfered with my round because if she didn't i wouldn't have come up with this one and maybe did all back posts and that wouldn't be as cute as it as it is right now so we're gonna do the back posts all the way to the end and then oops, getting out of picture and then you just repeat three more times and i'll see you back when we're done if that's okay with you so this is the last one and i'm gonna leave you to do the next three rounds and then i'll pop in again so that's round 18 all done uh, maybe i'll share you a little trick i probably should have told you in the beginning of this round but if you don't like counting stitches the first 11 stitches go all the way up to the so the last stitch is the one that's the last one in the back loop over here that's 11 stitches we are starting again after skipping five in the one that's in the first front loop here um, front post here and ending in the last uh, front post here so that's the nine single crochets and then skipping five again so the first one is again the first one in a back loop and then 11 all the way to there so that makes it easier if you don't like counting but i think you can count 11 so won't be a problem okay that was it for me back to this Oh my, time passes so quickly when you are having fun. We are up to my last round, not yours, but my last round that I will be filming. Uh, and then our lovely Ilsa will tie everything in together with her final round. But for me, this is the last one I will be making and I will be using the icy blue again. So you are going to find yourself a corner space, a chain two space and work just as we did on round 18, a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. This is our go to right now. So let's see, there we go. I'm just diving right into it, <laughs> ripping off the band aid. The last round. Okay, so you are working one back post, half double crochet together with me over the next 12 stitches, which should you take you to this point. Um, that point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What? Something is wrong. Oh no! Okay, so in the chain two space, we are working a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Like that. I'm just diving right into this round, ripping off the band-aid. Um, it has been a lot of fun, as it always is with these ones. Um, but for the next 12 stitches, we are working one back post half double crochet. 
So we are just going in here. Let's see. One, don't miss the hidden stitch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So by this point, you should have reached our five double crochet that was worked in a previous round. And over the first one of them, you are going to do a front post double crochet. And then over the next three, a front post half double crochet, okay? So one, two, three, and then a front post double crochet. We are just tying them up a little bit, creating the illusion that we are making clusters again. So now we are working a back post half double crochet over the next stitch, nine stitches. Sorry, I had to double check. It was a little bit, it has passed a little time since I've done this round <laughs> so <laughs> gonna familiar myself with the pattern again so one oh this was tricky today two there is a little bit tricky because these are the back posts single crochets from the previous round so there are not a lot of space to be working in so just take it slow and steady and you'll get there trying to catch as you see the entire stitch and not just the head you can do the head too if you want to but i think it's a little bit easier to get a straight edge if you are just going around the entire stitch so. do, do, do. hello oh i'm stuck i'm stuck <laughs> there we go there are a lot of good bloopers from this tutorial, I may say. <laughs> we'll see if we share some or if that is for another time. Um, so many misses and, and stuff like that, so really fun. So you should have placed a half double crochet back post around the stitches that are in between the five double crochets. So nine in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's correct, great. <laughs> and then we are doing a front post double crochet over the next stitch followed by a front post half double crochet over the next three just as we did on the other side so one two three and a front post double crochet over the next oh no not the half a double there we go so we are just doing what we did on the other side and now follows oh guess. sorry <laughs> I said wrong you guessed right for the next 12 stitches we are working one back post half double crochet nothing else half double crochets <laughs> I totally have written the wrong thing in the pad and I will correct that for for the real <laughs> release I promise <laughs> But this is why it's good to do tutorials too, because you find these little errors, these little things that easily slip one's eye otherwise. So we are working a back post, half double crochet all the way to the corner. And that should be 12 stitches in total. So it's just nice and smooth all the way. And we will end up with quite a straight line without blocking. Everything is better with a little bit of a blocking, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay, so look at that. You have a quite straight line, if I may say so myself. <laughs> so, a little recap on what we did. We have worked one half double crochet, chain two, one half double crochet around the chain two space. 
Then we have worked one back post half double crochet over the next 12 stitches, followed by a front post double crochet, a front post half double crochet over the next three stitches, a front post double crochet over the next, front po back post half double crochets over the next nine stitches, followed by a front post double crochet, three front post half double crochets, one front post double crochet, and then finally 12 back post half double crochets. I got it right! So this is all you do for this round, just take it nice and slow and go all the way around and meet Ilse up for the final little darling touch. Okay, and then I'll meet you up for the final words. So good luck, have fun! Yay! I can just get it all in the picture. So we're at the end of our square. Can you believe it? Um, normally around uh, 19, the one that just did, was supposed to be the last one. But when I was uh, doing that uh, round, I just had the feeling that something was missing and Maybe it was just that I didn't want to say goodbye to the little game we were playing because I really, really enjoyed it. But I also thought that it could do with some extra round. And because we didn't want it to be any bigger, because it was just the right size as we planned on doing, I thought I would do some uh, slip stitches all the way. So will be a quick and easy round just start in any corner and do a single crochet chaining two and another single crochet in the same corner space and then we'll be doing slip stitches slip stitches all the way so don't forget the hidden one here And a slip stitch just going to the other side and then doing a chain one a single crochet chain two and a single crochet in the corner so i don't think i'll have to go all the way with you with on this one so it's just slip stitching all the way around making a single crochet chain two in the corners and that's it so i'll finish up and then i'll come back to you when i'm done i'm popping in a little bit sooner because i thought it would be nice if we could just do the last stitches together so i hope you enjoyed me giving the tutorial along with this um, I was really scared in the beginning when she asked me to do the tutorial with her. I was like, what? Me? Talking on a video? No way. But uh, I'm glad she convinced me and I really started enjoying it. Uh, so I hope you liked it too. And I hope you like our square. I'm going to just do my invisible join. Um, I'd like to thank Tess again for believing in me, for encouraging me, for uh, trusting me to be on her tutorial. And uh, yeah, I thought it was so much fun and maybe we can do it again next time. So. I'm going to cut my ends later and that's it. That's our little Luli Lu square. No, it's not so little. It's a pretty big square. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'm sure this will pop uh, in again to say the final words. So it's over to you again, Tess. Thank you all for crocheting along. Bye.
And so we have finished our Lulilu Square. I hope you have had a lovely, lovely time joining me and Ilse throughout this tutorial. We hope you had a blast and maybe went, what the heck were you thinking, a few times just as us. So remember to give us a thumbs up, put on the notification, subscribe and maybe leave a little comment or so below. All the info is placed underneath and can be found on sistersinstitch.com along with more patterns, more crochet fun and yeah, until next time, take care and see you soon!